I've always loved the ZS 180 ever since I saw the launch of it. And what I quite like about the MG ZS 180, there are many things. Um, I love when a manufacturer can take a classic shape like the Rover 45, whether you loved it or hated it, um, but they can always do something with it. They can give it a new lease of life. Many years ago, I fell in love with the Capri 280, which was the last of the line for Capris. And to be honest with you, they were the same thing. They were a classic Capri shape and they were still right up until about an E-Reg, about 1987. In fact, I had a, an F-Reg one, which was on, uh, one of only five. Back to the ZS's, I've had several ZS 180's. I had a brand new one uh, back in 2002 with the Mark 1 and that was in the Trophy Blue. At the time I was directing Top Gear and programs like that. So I got invited up by Rover to come and drive my car, watch my car being built and then drive it off the line. And that's exactly what I did and was absolutely fantastic. So anyway, I made my mind up that I'd keep it, but uh, to cut a long story short, didn't, few issues with it, but nevertheless, I regretted it. Since then, I've had several ZS 180s. As they've got older, I think they've matured a bit, They're like a fine wine. This particular one behind me, it came up on the Facebook marketplace and I'd been looking for absolutely ages, realising they were going up in price. This one came up, it needed a bit of work doing to it. I was lucky enough that the guy who was selling it um, said he'd be able to arrange to have it delivered as well. Took a risk obviously because I hadn't seen the car, I hadn't driven it, so I was unsure what I was getting. I broke all the rules about myself buying cars and that was I bought it without seeing it without driving it um, and took a chance. To be honest with you, I think it paid off. The day it arrived here on the back of a transporter, I was like a kid on Christmas day, I have to say. It was actually, it looked better than I thought it would. Um, there was paintwork that I know needed to be done. Several other of the key MG kind of forts, um, shall we say, um, so nothing surprised me. It was my project car. It was bought as a project car. This was a car I felt worth looking after and um, not so much as an investment. Obviously, I'm sure we all hope that our cars are going to appreciate in time. Driving it, I can honestly say, puts a smile on my face. I love the MG ZS 180 because it's a classic shaped car that MG took and tried to do something with to give it a new lease of life. Yes, of course they were struggling financially to try and stay afloat and they had little choice, to be honest with you, um, other than to take old uh, their old design, their old cars, um, and try and basically, you know, bring them up to date. And I, I think they did that quite well with the ZS um, 180, the MG ZT and the MG ZR. The build quality, there's no excuse for that, could have been improved on and I think um, there was a lot of people on the factory floor that were feeling the frustration of management and giving us as well. You know what, I've driven BMWs and I've driven Mercedes and I've driven just about everything else and there's always a little bit of something wrong with all of them so um, maybe there are less things wrong with those cars than your average MG Rover but that said, um, you know, if we wanted a BMW we'd all go and buy one. I'll never forget the launch and I saw the cars uh, in the brochure and they hadn't been launched, actually it was about 2001 and they showed them all lined up. You know, there was a yellow ZR, the blue ZS and I think the ZT and, and they looked absolutely stunning. And I just saw that picture and I thought, I'm having one, I've got to have one. There was at the time nothing else on the road that was, I guess you could say a classic, um, an old shaped car that had been brought up to date. But that's what MG Rover did with this. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why every other MG ZS or ZR or ZT person, for that matter, um, loves these cars, but it is me. Um, and I love the fact that this car, in particular, the Mark II, by the time they put the shark gills on the side, they lowered it, they put the big arches on it, and they put all the sports trim. I actually do think they did a good job. Some of the things that needed to be done, um, as I said, are common thoughts with 
MG ZS180s, and I'm sure the Rover as well, the Rover version. First thing I had done was the windscreen. Windscreen had a chip in it. Um, it came up on advisories that it needed that needed to be done, so um, I got a new windscreen replaced. And secondly, the headlining, obviously sagging common fault not just on mgs or rovers but so many different cars well, i got a quote of around 600 quid to get that done which i thought was a bit steep um, so i decided to do it myself watch various instruction videos of how to take it out nervous as hell never done anything like this before in my life um, and to cut long story short my wife gave me a hand um, and between the two of us we took it out stripped it down and put the new headlining inside and uh, it's fine it looks absolutely amazing to be honest with you uh, a guy bought two kits for his that he was doing and was selling one on ebay so i love it i thought 25 quid job done beat the 600 quid quote that i'd got big big issue is uh the door cards as well i mean they just sag you know they're just a mess and after you know what is it 18 years you know, they're gonna sag so I've always thought even when I bought my brand new one I drove that off the line one of the things that would really set the car off especially with a full lever interior would be to have the door cards lever so I stripped them off and took them to a lever upholsterer and um, I bought the lever inserts already cut they were being sold online and uh, had him uh, fit those and they are absolutely stunning I mean I have to say they really do add that touch of class to the car. Um, next up, it was obviously cam belts. Big issue, very expensive, but nonetheless needed to be done. Uh, I could see from previous history that it had already been done twice before in this car's history. Um, but even so, you know, it was due to be done around about six years. So I had them changed and uh, MG Rover Mobile Mechanics did them as they've done all my cars and did an absolutely fantastic job. Next, I had the wheels refurbished. They were just absolutely Rough. Um, they'd been curbed, obviously. Two of them had a little twist in them as well, so they were re-straightened. They were literally dipped. Looked like brand new. Absolutely fantastic job. Um, I also got four brand new tyres, Continental tyres, to go on it as well, which I thought give it that kind of finishing touch. Now, this car didn't come with the big spoiler, um, and I know a lot of people out there do hate them. I love them, um, and as far as I'm concerned, the ZS180 has to have the big spoiler, so I managed to get one online. Um, it was due to have some paintwork done. Um, I also needed to get another bumper. I was looking at second-hand ones, but most of them were damaged and ridiculous money. I managed to get a brand new rear bumper. I went all the way down to Wikwa and picked it up, brought it back. And of course, when it went in the spray shop, they had to do the boot because that had all peeled, the lacquer had all come off it um, and the bonnet. So to cut long story short, I took it in and they did all that paintwork and when it came out it looked like a brand new car. My only problem now having done all this work and getting it looking this good is I guess like many classic car owners who've spent a fortune on their cars or really love them you just don't want to take it on the motorway or you just don't want to take it out uh, because of you know the good old-fashioned door dingers the trolley dents and goodness knows what else and I can park that a million miles from anywhere else in the car park um, and I'll come out and there'll be a car parked next to it. I've had uh, two brand new fog lights fitted to the front. Well, I've done that, so the bumper off. Every time I do something, it gives me an opportunity to get behind, clean, if I'm removing something, to wax off and protect it. And the whole of the underneath that car, I had cleaned black undersealed to protect it. What I have bought from Wickwell recently is two lower arms uh, to go on the front, so I want to get two new front discs fitted, um, but I managed to get two brand new from the factory floor. It will be a great feeling when they're finally fitted, which is next year's project, um, because then I'll feel like it's had some really new components put on it as well. Um, I don't want to go on spending money on it. I've got to start trying to use it and enjoy it. And I took it to Prada Longbridge 2022 and parked it up there. Lovely to see so many other MG Rovers still on the road, um, especially ZSs. But, um, you know, it. it even though there's other people there, like-minded people, we're all there for the same reason. We've got these lovely cars and we're looking after them. It, it, it's just the getting there that can happen. I've already had two stone chips, big stone chips to the front of it. I'm not going to let that put me off. I love driving it. 
I enjoy taking it to shows, or at least one so far, um, but having had previous classic cars like the Capris and all that kind of stuff, I enjoy showing them, I enjoy people seeing them. I love it when people say, my goodness, and that has been a head turner, I can guarantee you. The amount of people who have stopped me at petrol stations, but people will stop and will just comment on the car and just say how absolutely amazing the vehicle is. That's, that's nice. I got it because I love it. It's the last of the MG Rovers and um, I think worth keeping. And I think the same goes for any MG. I've got a TF, um, but the TF I bought new in 2012 and that's a lovely car. I intend to keep that and I intend to keep this. My biggest regret was I had an 08 one, which was one of, apparently one of the ones they dragged off the line. I didn't know this, hindsight, and that was assembled by the dealer, finished off by the dealer um, after it completed all its checks at the factory. Um, but uh, that was registered on an 08 and that was a ZR160. Um, and I sold that about four or five years ago for about three grand. Um, and I'm sure it's worth a lot more and it didn't have high mileage on it. But for now, I'm quite happy. ZS180, taking that out, giving it a good run and uh, hopefully I'll see you at a show in the future.